Good morning and welcome to worship at St. Matthew's this morning. Hi, John. Um, John and I and the worship team will be leading worship at our slightly different service this morning, being a combined nine o'clock and eight or nine thirty and eight o'clock service. So welcome to those who had to sleep in and welcome to those who got up early. And those online, pick it up when you pick it up. If you've joined us now, welcome along. Today we have a few things happening in service. We've got obviously a joint service. Um, at the end of the worship today, we'll be doing elders' elections. And then after that, um, if you're able to hang around and join in, the preschool will be open. So if you haven't been able to see the new renovations and what it looks like, you can wave a wander through, um, see what that looks like, and there'll be a barbecue on for an early lunch um, if you're um, able to hang around for a um, barbecue and a chat. So welcome to our worship today. Let's commence in prayer. Holy Father, by your Spirit encouraging us and the love of Christ enabling us, may we worship you with all, all the enthusiasm we can muster. We join our voices with the millions who this day and from every nation on earth will be praising your name, the name of Jesus. And with the great hosts of the heavenly souls, Glory to be, glory be to you forever, through Christ our King. Amen. As we gather for worship, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land in which we meet today and recognise their continuing connection to lands, waters and communities. We pay our respects to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures and to the elders past and present. As we commence worship, I'd like to light the Christ candle, but just for context, most Sundays we light what we call the Christ candle. The Bible speaks to us of the Word of God, which we know as Christ. The candle reminds us of God as Christ, who is the light of the world and our call, as disciples to mirror and shine that light. The cross reminds us of the way of the discipleship and the depth of God's love for all. Today, we light the candle to remind us of Christ's sacrifice and of our redemption through his action. And the Spirit of God is with us here at worship and in our lives every day. Today, you may be aware, you may not be aware, is the last Sunday in the church calendar, which seems a bit strange when our ordinary year finishes on the 31st of December, or if you're driven by the tax year, it's 30th of June or something else. But not the church lectionary, which is a three-year calendar providing us the readings, the Bible readings um, for each week the Old Testament, the Psalms, the Gospel and the other New Testament and the New, New Testament readings for each week. The reason the lectionary begins at the beginning of December is to allow us four-week preparation for the birth of Christ. This four-week period is known as Advent and next week is the first of Advent, first week of Advent. Today, in the lectionary, is known as Christ the King Sunday or the Reign of Christ Sunday. And John will be talking to us later on today, about later on in the service, um, not today because we're not going to be going all day, um, talking to us about the theme of do the right thing. And as we focus on worship today, I thought it might be appropriate for a quick reflection over the last four weeks themes as we've gathered. This year in the lectionary has been focused on the book of Matthew and over the last four weeks there's been some interesting topics in there. Four weeks ago, 
29th of October, if you remember that Sunday, the theme for the day was the great commandment, or sorry, the topic for the Bible, if you've got a Bible and it's got headings in it, the, the heading for that week was the great commandment. And then the second part of the reading was the question about David's son. And John spoke to us on the theme of love the Lord, your God, and your neighbour. And one of the key passages for me in that Sunday was verses 37 and 38 out of Matthew 22, 34 to 46, which is, and he said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And this is the greatest and the first commandment. And the second is like, is like you shall love your neighbour as yourself. A great foundation and the core for us in our faith as we progress forward. And then as we move forward from there, we hear the reading about um, in 20 verse chapter 23, 1 to 12, Jesus denouncing the scribes and Pharisees. Where And in that day, the theme was about celebrating all saints. And the board of the saints that were in our church has moved on. But one of the key readings in that day for, were for me was the message about being humble. Verse 11 and 12 were that the greatest among you will be your servant. All who, shall, all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. Reminding us to not get ahead of ourselves, but to focus on what we are called to be as servants of Christ and servants of those around us. Then we move forward through the parable of the ten brides, and last week, the parable of talents and the gift the theme being there's no gift without a corresponding service or ministry and the key or i guess my key takeaway from last week out of john's sermon was we are all given gifts but it converts to a talent when we actually use it we develop it we in learn more about how to use it but that if we don't use our talent don't use our gift it never becomes a talent we effectively um, are wasting something that god's given us so as we think about those and reflect about those let's proceed into worship and if you're able to stand and join our first song today is all people on earth, that on earth do dwell.
together in prayer. Let's pray. We give you all thanks and praise, O God, for your love is forever, faithful from age to age. As we prepare to celebrate Christ's birth and coming amongst us as a babe born in a manger, we celebrate who we belong to. We come together in praise and thanksgiving, thanking you for creating the earth that we live in, the sun, the moon and the stars, the oceans and the waters and the lands on which we live and survive, the plants and all the living creatures of your creation. We celebrate you as shepherd of all that is in the past, present and that will be in the future and all that's within your creation. In Christ Jesus, your child, you fulfilled the promises of the holy text. You provided a shepherd who seeks the lost and heals the wounded. With Jesus through his resurrection and seated at your side in heaven, we celebrate your mercy and redemption of enabling him to be born a humble human. Go and suffer amongst us. And then that you left with us your spirit who is at work within us every day. As we gather, we praise you for the gifts you provided each of us and the ability to love you and love our neighbours just as you love us. During this period, when excess and unbridled spending in the run-up to Christmas on discretionary items occurs, we give you thanks for those who are dedicate, have dedicated their lives to caring for and serving the vulnerable. We give you thanks for the courage you provide those caring and supporting the seriously sick and grieving and seeking to provide home housing for the homeless and food for the hungry. Lord, we lift our hearts high and offer you thanks and praise at all times through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Friends, this church building is like a hospital, hostel for royal pilgrims. Let us bring our errors, our sins and the baggage from our journey in life before the keeper of this place. Lord, we place the lot before you. Please forgive and save us. Assist us to let go of misleads or corrupt us. Help us to find new delight in things that are truly delightful in your sight. Let us restock with gifts of your spirit and fix our eyes on you again. Brothers and sisters, our King is unlike any other. He comes not to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. We are among those who have been ransomed. Take your freedom and live it joyfully and lovingly for your King wants to share his gift with you. Amen. John, over to you. Alrighty. So, I need some assistance. Come on, young people. Love your hell. Oh, that's all my stuff falling on the ground. That's all right. Come. Oh, cool. I need probably one, two, three, four, five, six, six. Seven. Come on, Rav. Come on, Theo. Come on, Melissa. No, you don't have to. Come on, you, you, you're not. Come on, get up here. Come on, someone. Oh, thanks, Bob. You, you just have to hold a piece of paper, just so you know, in case you're wondering, you know, how hard it is. Uh, Why well, it's not your colour? Do you want bread or green? Green. Okay, there you go. Oh, thank you. Awesome. I'm um, sorry, people on the screen. Oh, if we go over here, um, we now have a kid's camera and people might actually see us. Awesome. There's one. I still need one person. Oh, thank you, Phil. All right. So, 
Um, where are we going? We're going. The liturgical calendar. Here's a lesson if you haven't remembered what it's all about. Um, what are the most important seasons of the church? Easter? Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. No. Christmas. The Jesus ones. Do you know what colour they are? The Jesus seasons. They're all Jesus, but you know. White. Yes. Good white. Everyone say white. Cool. They're the celebration seasons. And the way the calendar works is leading up to the celebration seasons, guess what we have? Christmas. Preparation seasons. That's the right answer. Good work. And what colour are the preparation seasons? Purple. Yes. Good. We're getting somewhere. So, so I need the purple to move in front of the, to the left of the white. Oh, to your, to your right. No, yeah, good. That's it. Good work. Excellent. Um, so we have the main seasons of Christmas and Easter. They're the high points of our calendar. And then each, because liturgical means work for us, the people. Literally, work of the people. So we gives us work to do. We prepare, we celebrate. We prepare, we celebrate. And then following the season, we get on and do stuff. They're the growth seasons. Guess what color growth is? Green. Good work. We're getting on. Okay, so Phil's in the right place. Bob's in the right place. Noni, you've got to step out of line because... Because just to complicate things, somebody said Pentecost is the most important season. <laughs> sort of. It's a special season and it gets slotted in just after Easter. And hence, there's another little celebration in there called Epiphany. And then the season after Epiphany. Then we get ready for Easter, Lent, celebrate Easter. Then we have Pentecost, and then we have after Pentecost, which is finally finishing this week. And guess what we're going to next week? Advent. Good work. Thank you, team. Give them all a clap. Thank you for volunteering. Now, I'm about to upset some people, I'm sure. Um, but two reasons. One is Christ the King Sunday and I've got a throne up the front and people online can't see it. So and I've put it on the communion table because it's Jesus' table anyway and if we don't enthrone Jesus on our communion table, where are we enthroning Jesus? So now hopefully people can see that. And Adele, thank you. You probably don't notice it, but Adele's been our saint that has been changing the liturgical colours for years. And they just change magically. But no, there isn't a magic liturgical fairy. It's Adele and she's been faithfully doing that. And that was on the thing, but I moved it onto the throne. So white is the season and gold sometimes is the season. So that's the lesson for today. Stand in the screenshot, John. Um, so that's the liturgical year. And it all reminds us about this great commandment that we have to love. That is the work. But to help us remember how to do that, we have these seasons and they set some readings for us as well. I think we're going to... What have we got next, Amanda? I've been wondering. Oh, fusion video. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Our fusion no have been making videos. Yeah, that was it. Keep going. Oh, we'll go back. So the team have been looking at how you connect with God, and they made a connection, a set of videos about 
God. And they're boys, so you may not completely get what they're on about, but I think they've done a great job. Here they are. Him. Him first. Read the slides. Read the order of service. The Power of Your Love by Jeff Bullock. The first reading, uh, first reading this morning is from Ezekiel chapter, uh, chap, chapter 34, verses 11 to 16 and 20 to 24. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will se seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the watercourses and in, the, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, I will bring back the strayed and I will bring up the injured and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy, I will feed them with, in, with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder, 
and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I, I will save my flock. They shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will, I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be, a, be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another, from another as, a shepherd, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, come, you are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you stra a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it for the least of the these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart into eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you didn't welcome me. Naked and you didn't give me any clothing. Sick and in prison and you didn't visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did, did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these, will go, and these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Hear the word of the Lord. All right. <coughs> I don't know if the click is working. There we go. So we got this as Albert reminded us. It's all set up. For me, this is the answer to this. In Luke, we get the parable of the Good Samaritan, which, again, misnamed, should be the parable of the loving neighbour. And in Matthew, we get a whole bunch of parables and a bunch of stuff about the end times. This is the worst parable to preach on. Not because it's the worst parable, but because the message is the one that hits us in our nefesh, our throat, our soul, our being. It should strike at our hearts. It should humble us. And it's not a fun message. I'm going to share two stories. One, Peter Singer. Peter is um, a renowned Australian. He, um, as you can see, is a lecturer in applied ethics. Um, he's a philosopher, an atheist, and he comes from sectarian and probably one of the most Christian people I know. And I came across his TED talk and went, Oops. Peter starts off this disturbing talk and confronting with this horrendous story. It was a video image. It's about 10 years old now. But there was a little girl, one new, who was about two. For some reason, she was wandering along the road 
in um, a place in China, and that van hits her and runs her over. In fact, actually stops and rests on her for a while and then drives off. And then someone walks along past one you and does what you expect they'd do, walks by. And then another person rides by on the motorbike and walks by. And in fact, that's not the only people that do it. There are a whole bunch. There's even another van that drives past, and I've seen the actual video footage, and it's horrendous. And the van drives over a leg, and eventually a street sweeper comes along and sees her and takes her to hospital, but unfortunately it's way too late and she dies. And Peter Singer says, brings us back to the reality. See, most of us would say, oh my goodness, I would have stopped. Hand up if you would have stopped and helped one you. Yes. But he takes it to a next level. What if one you was in the, the laneway out there and we're in here? And somebody comes and says, quick, a girl's been hurt out there, one of our preschool kids. Would you go out and help? What if it was up at the roundabout? He says, he introduces, he doesn't call it this, but I've come to call it moral distance. And he would argue there is no moral distance. And this is where the Disney princess theology stuff comes in that I've been talking about. See, he would argue, what is the difference between one you driving in a street in China and the five million children dying in Africa or somewhere else? And that's where it comes home. I had a terribly awful and wonderful vision once. I was sitting in church at what it was Gordon Uniting, it's now part of Gordon U, Gordon Pimble Uniting, and it happened to be a place where I ended up being chaplain for 14 years. But about halfway down the thing, one evening service, I had this vision. Don't, I can't even remember who was preaching and what they were preaching on, but I just went somewhere else. And I looked, I'm going to cry, I always do. I looked into the eyes of Jesus on the cross and I saw me as he sees me. And the first thing I was hit with was truth. And we all like to think we're pretty good people, but I saw the consequences of my life. All the children that die because I don't help them all the damage that it's done, all the relationship troubles I've caused. I saw the good as well, but mostly I was confronted with the awfulness that, you know, me buying my latest Samsung phone means that I don't really need the new version, but I would just want it. It means that there are people who could have been saved. And if you want to know what hell is, that is hell for me, to see the truth, of our souls bared out, the whole of our life and all the consequences of your actions. Worse than any fire, because that just hit me where it was. But luckily that didn't stop there. Then I got to see deeper and saw Jesus looking at me and how I'm seen by Jesus, which is Jesus doesn't focus on that truth. He looks beyond that to see me and my potential. It's an image of love. There is sadness that I haven't yet caught the glimpse of that vision that I could be. I haven't lived into my potential, but the idea of grace is that I could. What if, what if I just did as I should and actually understood how much I'm loved and how much I can make a difference in the world? So it was a horrible vision but it was also one that was wonderful. And it stripped away any Disney princess theology that I might have, that, whoa, I'm a friend of Jesus and I'm going to heaven. I am going to heaven, but 
by the grace of God and the skin of my teeth. And it's only because God loves me. That's the only thing that will get me there because I don't love God enough. And it wasn't a guilt thing. It's just a knowledge. That's just the truth. So if you look at the latest UNICEF figures, more than 5 million children, and this was for 2022 under the age of five, including 2.3 million newborns, along with 2.1 children and youth aged between five to 24 years, 43% of adolescents died in 2021, which is good news in that 10 years ago, that was way higher and that number has been coming down. It's starting to plateau a bit. But all the work around the, you know, the UN global goals and things like that and the things, we are changing the world. It, less children are dying, but still 5 million children die. And mostly, and the tragic thing is, massive loss of life was due to preventable or treatable causes. I could do more, but I don't yet. And as Peter Singer says, does it matter that those children aren't the ones that we have to walk around as we walk down our street? Is there a um, distance to our moral arc? And he would argue not, that there is no moral distance that we should see them just as we would see a kid in the street and we should do what we can when we can. And so it was a pretty confronting TED talk, not your normal happy go lucky. But he said there's a thing we can do. We can make a difference. We can help things. And he's been a big advocate of this thing called effective altruism. And this is where the sad thing for me was, is that these are often secular atheist type people, humanists, who take this up, who say, I don't need this much money. I can probably live comfortably on this much money and the rest I will use for charity. They choose to live on less so that they can do more. And Peter would argue, that way, you can earn big salaries. There's nothing to present, there's nothing wrong with being a lawyer or a doctor or a parliamentarian, just as there isn't for any role. How much do you need to live on? And then, can you live on that and then give the rest? And there are a whole bunch of people he reaches through. And then he says effective altruism is effective. You can train up a guide dog, $40,000 to, uh, to help a person who is unable to see, usually in a rich country like Australia, which isn't a bad thing. But for $2, you can cure somebody of blindness in the third world like Fred Hollows talks about. How many $2 goes into 40000 which is more effective in your altruism. So he would argue nothing wrong with training a, blood, a guide dog, but how do we make our dollars go further? And it wasn't about guilt. He's not telling us what to do. He wasn't there telling us. He's just saying, this is what some people are doing. Isn't that awesome? What if we did it too? So love God with our whole being, our nefesh, our minds and soul, and love our neighbor as ourselves. That's the peeps bit. I think these parables have been a, an answer to who is our neighbor in the Matthew. And we get this one today and we just look at the words, oh, this is so hard. But Jesus spells it out. And it's even worse in the Ezekiel reading because Jesus or the, the king doesn't judge between the sheep and the goats. He judges between the sheep and the sheep. And he said, you fat sheep who've had the good life and have pushed out the poor, 
you're slaughtered. You're the sacrifice. Sioni Abeah, who is my Old Testament lecturer, wrecked the 23rd Psalm for me. Because he said, you know, what do, what do shepherds keep sheep for? Oh, we went wool and he went, no, lamb chops. But these are things we could do. And we can't do it all the time for everyone, but are we doing enough? And the parables that we've been hearing have been hitting us again. The kingdom of God is now, not later, it is now. And when the rich young ruler went to Jesus, what did Jesus say to him? What did Jesus say to him? He said, go, sell all you have and come and follow me. And that's before we get to this. And I shared this with you last week. C.S. Lewis said, to have Christ means trying to do all he says, but doing it in a new way, a less worried way. So it's not about fear that God's going to send us to hell and the fires of hell and things like that. But let's do these things in order to, because he's begun to save us already. How are we being saved? Is it, is it working in our lives? And, and are we doing it to get into heaven as a reward or are we just doing it because we get what heaven's about and we could make a difference and we can help God do that? How good is good? And if God is that good and love is that wonderful and we've been loved that much, surely we should love God with our wholeness, our everything, our nefesh, our whole being, our all, and that includes loving our neighbour. And you can't do one without the other. So if you think coming here is worship to receive eternal life, I think we've got it wrong. This is part of our worship, but it should encourage us to go out and do these other things. How do you receive eternal life? Well, love God and love everyone else. It's that easy, but that high. And who is our neighbour? Well, according to the parables, we should forgive as we've been forgiven and not judge those terrorists and those things causing all the havoc in the world when perhaps with our wealth, we're the fat sheep. Then we should share our light because if we don't share our light, others are going to get left in the dark. And we appreciate the trust that's bestowed on us, that that talent, that amount of goodness that God says, you've got the kingdom in you. Are you bearing it? Or are you making it come into being more? Make good with that trust that has been given to us. And then it's not just what we say. Lord, Lord, I love you, Lord. Jesus, you're a friend of mine. The king would say, unless you have fed the hungry, slaked the thirsty, given clothes to those who needed clothes, visited those who were in prison, cared for those who are ill, I didn't know you. Depart from me. Fat sheep. It's not an easy message to hear. So if you've read the newsletter, I did this thing. Do the right thing. That's the basic message. You know, don't worry about the end times when Jesus is coming back. Because that question sort of says, or oh, if I know when, a bit like our house, cleaners are coming this week. So everyone goes and tidies up all the mess that has been developed for the last two weeks because the cleaners are coming so that they can clean. Wrong question. In fact, eschaton, eschatological, end times, last time is the last thing we should be thinking about. Just do the right thing. That's just what Jesus said. Just do it. Don't worry about it. And our 
liturgical cycle just teaches that again and again and again. Why do we have to celebrate Christmas? Because we haven't got the point yet. Why do we have to celebrate Easter every year? Because we haven't got the point yet. We're not doing the work. We, or we start doing it. Uh, I'll do it later. And the parables say, no, don't do it later. Do it now and just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. And it's not that hard if we do it with God. If we try and do it by ourselves, eh, come to me, all who are weary and laden, and I will give you rest. But put my yoke on you because I give you the church and we're going to work on this together. you still got work to do. You just don't have to do it all by yourself. So the message at the end of the liturgical year as we get ready for a new season and a new church year is just keep doing the right thing. And if you're not, maybe do it. And if you're not doing it as right as you could be, do it more right. Because that's what ethics is. And my definition, probably bad. Morals is what's right and wrong. We know what's right and we know what's wrong. But in each situation, we've got to work out what's more right and less wrong. We've got that choice in our lives. How do we bring that moral into being, the moral good? And there is no moral distance that we should be considering about. How far is too far away that we have to care about those people? And the answer, I think, Jesus says is there isn't. Because in the parable, there is no limit. There's no distance set. And in the Ezekiel reading, are we the fat sheep or are we the people of God? Are we the goat or are we the sheep? We are the sheep, but how do we live well as sheep? How do we do the right thing? We are going to sing the King of Glory. If we're going to enthrone God, what does that mean in our lives? Respond to the grace of God, giving of ourselves, the life of our community, our prayers, and we offer to join in the work of this congregation through our offerings and support the work that we do together. So your offering for God's work will be received, should you wish to. And don't feel, never feel guilty. Because a lot of us do it online now, so it doesn't matter if we're not putting stuff in the, the bag.
God, what can we give but our all in response to all that you have given us? Take us, use us. Take what we offer and use it to bring your kingdom. Amen. Um, for those who may have noticed, um, there's an announcement there just around from Dulcy about Lois Longmuir's funeral, which is next Thursday. Um, there is also dun, 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 um, an Advent study. You can just take it, download it, do it yourself. I'm going to be here twice a week, once in the morning, once in the evening. Unfortunately, with the way the calendar works and meetings and things like that, the mornings are pretty set except for one or two, but the evenings I've had to swap around different days of the week. Come for one, come for all, or do it yourself. Grab a team together, and if you want to do it with a group, if you're already meeting as a group, then you might want to consider doing that. Just some Advent studies. Um, and study one is pretty much now, and then we'll start with actual two this week because Christmas comes pretty quickly this year. Um, if you're wondering about, you know, how can I be more Jesus-y and do more sheepish stuff rather than goats, you know, that every year there's stuff you can donate to the food pantry up at um, Trinity. No, is it Trinity? Yeah. You can, you know, there's the Christmas bowl. There's the GFA stuff to do, there's things you can buy, there's the Everything in Common catalogue, instead of just buying more stuff for people, buy them some sheep and goats for other people. There's the tier catalogue, there's different ways you can look at, there's contributions you can make. There is so much that we can do and sometimes we get to the point where we go, oh, not another thing. Jesus did say, give to those who ask from you. But it's not out of guilt. And we need to just be conscious about that. How can we be effective in our altruism? Was there anything else? The barbecue, election for elders afterwards. If you haven't got a form, we'll distribute those later. Anything else that I've missed, Barb, except David wanted to make an announcement. morning um, yeah we're going to do the prayers and then I've got a couple of announcements so uh, let's let's join together in prayer Lord we give thanks that we can worship together today in a combined service and spend time with other members of our community who we don't regularly get to share this time with both during and after the service we give thanks for all those in our community who have contributed to the church over time the border names we had was a testament to the contributions of so many people who have enriched this place and with it the lives of those that have been part of it through the giving of their time and talents we pray lord that our faith community here continues to be a witness of christ's light that we continue to grow and shining outwards sharing the word of your love mercy and grace to the wider community and that we continue to find new ways to connect with others beyond our walls and in doing so live out our call to be faithful witnesses and servants of yours Today we have the chance to look through the building works in the preschool. Thank you for your provision, Lord, that you have been able that we have been able to undertake this work and provide a necessary enhancement to our facilities. What a blessing to have had the resources to undertake this work and provide another page in our church's growing history. We put forward to you today those in our community here who are suffering with illness or injury. May they have comfort in knowing your love from that relationship they have with you. We pray for their healing and strength to deal with their challenges. May they have peace that comes from their faith in you. We continue to pray for our church family members who have lost loved ones in recent times. Help them to feel loved and supported as they grieve and adjust to a new way of life without someone who has been so important to them. And this morning, Lord, we especially pray for Ray Longmuir, a former minister here at St Matthew's on the death of his wife, Lois. We pray for Craig and Kath and the rest of the family as they grieve her loss. And also Ray and Lois's friends here who will fear her loss. 
Thank you, Lord, for her contribution to St. Matthew's, her faithful service to you, and may she be at peace in your care now. In this last week of spring, we are thankful for all the beauty of nature we have in this season of renewal and new life. The opportunity for beautiful flowers, for seeing leaves grow back in time, for providing shade and protection in the heat of summer, and watching new life after the cold of winter. How beautifully orchestrated it all is. And nature gives us the reminder that there is a creator God. And seeing the beauty of nature reminds us of how lucky we are. In the wider world this week, we pray for Brunei, Malaysia and Singapore. We give thanks for Protestant, Catholic, Orthodox and Evangelical churches and councils of churches in Malaysia and Singapore who have witnessed to the gospel and ministered for economic developments that have enhanced the life and standard of living for many and those who have sought to further ethnic and religious harmony. We pray for more participatory and democratic rule, for locally determined economic developments that lessen inequalities and protect natural resources. Lord, we are thankful for the temporary ceasefire in the Israel Hamas war, allowing some hostages to be freed and for aid to go into Gaza. We pray for all those affected by the terrorist acts and the war in Israel and Gaza. May permanent peace come swiftly for that region. And a resolution to the ongoing animosity that exists there. We acknowledge the long history of unrest and the complexities between the various peoples who live in the region. And Lord, we continue to pray for the people of the Ukraine and those caught up in the war with Russia, which drags on. It's hard for us to imagine on the other side of the world, yet it's such a ser- terrible situation for the people there. Lord, in the wider community, we pray for the vulnerable and sick, the disadvantaged and the poor. As we head into Christmas, we know that this time, which is meant to be one of joy and happiness, is often one of sadness and loneliness. Be with those who struggle, Lord. Be with the homeless and the unemployed, for those struggling to meet the cost of living. We pray that their needs are met and that the trend of a growing divide between haves and have-nots starts to reverse, perhaps through government policy, but also through people's own thoughts and decision-making. We give thanks and pray for our ministry team, for John, Mike, Daniel, for Robin and Lynn, for our elders, our leaders and volunteers. We pray for our preschool staff, our op shop volunteers, and those who regularly work and assist throughout the week around our church, and then with worship in so many different ways. So this morning, Lord, may we think about our gifts. May we use them and the talents we have nurtured in service in your name. May we be challenged to continue to grow our talents and to use them to fur- further to serve you and others. And now if you'll join with me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Okay, so a couple of announcements. <clears throat> first, first thing, um, the downstairs foyer and hall um, are getting a makeover. So there's going to be new floors and some painting done um, and the removal of the compactor storage unit in the downstairs kitchen. We're trying to freshen everything up. Uh, the new floor is going to be laid uh, around the 16th of January, so it's the third week of Jan. And the old floors need to be removed before this can be done. So uh, we're looking for people to volunteer to help um, with that. Um, the tiles will come up fairly easily. We're getting a machine that, that, will, that will help with that. Um, so if anyone is willing and able to help from Monday the 8th of January that week, we're just going to be doing that work and, and doing some painting. So um, many hands make light work. And anyone that um, can help uh, would be greatly assisted, uh, greatly appreciated. Um, and according to the newsletter, you can talk to me about that. So, so please come and talk to me. Uh, the other thing that I want to talk about briefly is the, um, well, probably not briefly actually, looking from one of Britain, um, the preschool open morning um, today. Uh, so obviously after the elders elections, we've got, we've got the facilities open. That's so that um, anyone who uh, is keen to see can see the work that's been done over the last couple of years. Uh, it seemed it just ended up opportune that we were having a, a combined service this morning uh, with with that happening, uh, but it 
was also, I think, opportune that now that the work was finally complete with the last finishing touches recently, um, before we could hold this open day, that um, I just wanted to acknowledge um, people that were involved in it and also, um, you know, give a word of thanks. And there is a list and that probably then really shows how many people um, contributed and, and helped. So, firstly, a summary of the work that was done. Um, it was a two-storey extension behind the back of the hall with a large new storeroom completed with ramp access, a new staff room, a reconfigured library area. Uh, the craft kitchen was moved from the foyer of the preschool area into where the old library was. There's an additional staff toilet, reconfigured foyer area now, which is much more open and accessible with a sliding door. And anyone who had seen, um, you know, parents trying to get into the old door with uh, prams and that kind of stuff, it was, it was a nightmare. So um, that's a big enhancement. Um, there's a new accessible bathroom. The entry ramp there at the foyer was widened um, with a new, f new fencing and the final piece, which, which took some time, was new decorative screens and gate for the entry ramp. Um, and that came about because we had to have a 1800 meter, uh, 1800 mil high fence and we wanted something that looked nice and not too much like a, like, like a jail. And that's just been completed and it is really beautiful and sets it off. There was also an opportunity to upgrade the IT system while the work was done and is now absolutely first class and resolves ongoing um, network issues. So what started as additional staff room facilities uh, then had to morph into addressing serious work health safety risks with the previous equipment storage, which was under the subfloor at the back there and th was about that high. So you can imagine dragging out big pieces of play equipment was not good. So uh, it is now incorporates a new storeroom, a major renovation makeover, all this coupled with the new roof windows, etc. So the preschool now has a fit for purpose modern facility, which is the envy of other centres, according to Sonali and sets the centre well for many years to come. Um, you'll also see that there's been significant improvements that have been undertaken in recent years, prior to that being um, the preschool front office renovation. We moved the wall and opened that up. Uh, there's new flooring through the classrooms, there's painting, there's been new bathrooms in the upstairs rooms, and most recently the downstairs bathroom was also renovated. So it's really been completely made over. All of this was funded through accumulated funds of the preschool, which is a great position to have been in. And on top of that, the preschool was able to contribute $130,000 towards the roof project of the church. And without that, um, the, the whole roof project actually wouldn't have been able to happen because we couldn't borrow the money. So we've just been so blessed to be able to do this. So now a few thank yous. Ian Gray, uh, who I first spoke to us about, about this, uh, and he encouraged me to push ahead with it because it filled a need. To the builders, Scope Constructions, John and Brent Carolyn, their workers, Reese, Guy, Joey, Spiro and Subbies, their work was exceptional and they were great to, to deal with. I cannot thank them enough. Uh, Derek Lee provided project management. Derek Lee had been part of the Uniting Church um, and then provided project management services. He went above and beyond. Um, and, and uh, then we also had John Martin and Peter Stenning from Presbytery and their guidance was really valuable at the right time and gave us the, the right referrals with the builders and with Derek. Priestly Architects, there was Mike Barlow to start with and then Russell Bramley who jumped in when Mike retired. They were a huge help um, in the planning, in lodging the DAs, um, they, were, they, they were huge. So, and, they, and they helped us out by not charging as much either as the project dragged on. Um, Robert Velardi's at the building certifiers. Um, so he actually certified this front area here of the church that was done a few years ago. And because he was on that DA, he ended up still being involved and he, he was fabulous. Terry Oliver, you're great to work with. And um, I know you, you, I'm embarrassing you, but um, you were, and you did a huge amount of work as the roof and the building overlapped. To the management committee members over the period of planning initially, uh, and then construction, their support was immense. Executive committee members over that time, Fiona Chong, Luke Bailey, Nisha Palmer, they were all great sounding boards for the things that I had to run past them and very supportive. Belinda Schuster, uh, she's continued to provide a lot of support in the background too and she understands how it works having previously been the chairperson. Dirk was also extremely supportive always and understood the importance of the church and preschool connection. The staff, wow, they did 
so much. They were extremely flexible through the building time and were also extremely patient waiting for all this to happen finally after years of planning. Helen and Sonali, thank you especially for all the work in coordinating so much when the building was happening. And also Anne Mabry, a long-term director who supported me wholeheartedly in the planning. Uniting and Early Learning Managers were also supportive and David Elliott's office um, was facilitated the state government grant of $30,000, which was also helpful. I also just want to acknowledge the people who have been involved in the preschool over many years, those who had the foresight to, to construct it, so Ron Napa, Bev Stad, people who were heavily involved in the committee there, um, people like Rosalie Cameron, who was a licensee, um, uh, she was involved for around 15 years, Bev worked there, Adele Arthur, um, there, there are a few, and I, I know I'm not mentioning all the names, there's too many, but there are a couple, and what I can say is that this project is for everyone who has been involved and has been part of the rich history now for almost 50 years. But lastly, I'd like to thank the church community here. Thank you for your support of the project. It's a two-way street with the church and preschool. Uh, support for this project from church council and the community was fabulous. Be encouraged that this, through this outreach, we're impacting young lives at a critical time in their life. Early learning is just so important and it's a wonderful service that we're able to provide through St Matthew's Preschool. So please have a wander through and see firsthand how it's all come together. And enjoy the barbecue that uh, Barb and Helen have organised also. Thanks. And I, I, I think it goes without saying that we owe a lot of big thanks to David and his energy his advocacy, so thanks, David, for all the work you've done. Um, it was really cute. I was setting up on yesterday for Fusion, and I'm just listening, and they're singing this song about Christmas coming, and the cows going moo, 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 because Jesus is coming. And blah, blah, blah. So they, they, it is run as a faith-based community centre. We understand the different people from different backgrounds come, but they understand that it is a uniting thing. And on Tuesday, I think, we've, we had to change the day because Dano's got COVID. Um, I'll be in here and the, all the children will come in and we'll be singing some Colin Buchanan songs and dressing up to tell the nativity story. So do pay for our preschool as you walk through it. It is an important part. And if you can think of ways that you could see us engaging more with the preschool, let elders or David or I know and we'll think about that because Sonali is keen for us to continue that. Um, we finish with our song and our song to send us out is the Servant King. It is Christ the King but as um, Albert reminded us, Jesus is our Servant King.
So let us learn how to serve and better enthrone Christ in our lives. For our God is the God we know in Christ who is with us as spirit and who calls us to know how great the kingdom of God is and it is within us and amongst us and we have but to share it with others. So let us go and serve the Lord through our daily offering of worship. Amen. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Spirit, who is with us and will be with us and goes with us, continue to lead us now and always. Amen.